Okay, so what I'm looking for you to do in question two is uh, pretty similar to question one, you know, so you're going to want to do some of this stuff here, but um, what I really want you to focus in on here is basically um, uh, I want you to sort of elaborate uh, on uh, Sachs's objection about personal data. Okay, that's the sort of uh, real goal of this whole question. So I'm trying to focus on one, you know, there's a bunch of things you could have done in question one, but uh, uh, this question I want you to focus in on a particular thing. So let's go through kind of just the things you need to make sure you do here. Um, so this is a, the way it's worded is a little bit backwards, right? So you're going to need to explain what Sachs's objection is. So that means you're going to need to say a little bit about this. You know, so this is now the part that you would have gone into way more detail on question one. Uh, so you need to say a little bit here just to frame it. Um, then you need to spend a little bit of time explaining Sachs's objections. Um, and, uh, you know, there's a couple that you could use. Uh, like I said, um, maybe you could get this going with the one that has to do with like the, the theory of uh, justice that's being presupposed, but um, that's tricky. So, you know, up to you, but I wouldn't suggest that. I would suggest focusing on the objection that has to do with personal data, right? So the thought is, um, remember I said uh, with personal data, the problem, so you got to explain, so tests, and the big task is to set out whatever objection you're working on, and then you're going to sort of mess around, you know, with this stuff. Okay, so uh, remember there was two lines of objection here, right? Uh, there was the, as I think I just wrote above, you know, in, about tech, question one, there's the, like, the technical one, which is just if you get a bunch of computer scientists, you know, uh, who are, you know, interested in this stuff and give them a big data set that's been allegedly anonymized, a lot of times it's they can find ways to sort of figure out who the folks in the data set are. It's just uh, tricky. So you might want to, well, actually, I don't think you would probably want to go too far into that objection here. Uh, you might want to explain that one in more detail if you were doing question one. But uh, the other one is the Florida-based one, right? This is the one that's uh, about... Um, about the nature of personal data, right? Where, you know, you, you are in fact your data, uh, you know, so, uh, right, you're, you are your data. So, uh, that's probably the one you want to focus on. So, Again, you don't need to give Forty's argument for it because uh, we didn't talk about it too much in class. Um, you know, you could say a little bit about it having to do with um, a theory of personal identity, uh, but that's you don't want to go too deep into that, right? That's that's a that's a dissertation topic, uh, so you don't want to go too far into what that is. But you might want to say, you know, he thinks that this is a good theory because uh, or a good way of seeing personal data because it um, it solves some problems of personal identity. Don't, but you know, probably don't want to go too much into detail. Okay, so the real thing is that I'm interested in here is that on. Uh, both Flaherty and or Sachs's use of Flaherty and some things Flaherty says elsewhere, um, it's not super clear why exactly this is supposed to be a problem, right? So it's just kind of like um, Sachs is, seems to be saying like, look, you know, uh, I'm just using colors randomly now apparently. You know, Sachs is saying something like, um, you know, if... Uh, <laughs> You, you know, uh, how do I put it? Yo data, you know, then it's uh, sort of uh, wrong to use the data or something like that, All right? Um, and that's intuitive, but, you know, we want something more than intuitive. We want to really sort of spell out what might be going on here, why, might, why we might actually care about this, or why that might be true. So I think the way that I said it when we were doing in lecture was just kind of like, um, uh, you know, if, 
it, you know, you like sort of just the straightforward claim that, you know, uh, basically people can't be owned, right? Uh, so in other words, you know, like the fundamental objection to slavery, right, you know, is that, uh, you know, all sort of human beings who are capable of autonomy need to be allowed to be autonomous, you know, that's sort of a fundamental thing if in any kind of moral picture, however you justify it, right? So somebody being the property of someone else is just not going to be okay. Um, but, you know, there, that was probably a little too quick. And so what I'm looking for you to do here is elaborate on, you know, sort of why that could be true. Because, you know, think about this. Um, sure, if using the data is like using people as, um, as like literal slaves, that's not going to be okay. But, you know, it's not obvious that that's exactly the right, um, analogy. Cause, um, think of like, uh, you know, selling your labor, right? Probably most of you have jobs and all of you will have some in the future. Um, so selling your labor is okay right? You're allowed to say, I will move my body around for you in this way um, if you pay me. So why does just your data being the same as you automatically mean that it's not going to be um, uh, okay to use it, right? Uh, so I guess you could think of it as like, is, is the right analogy here um, selling your, you know, selling your humanity, right? Selling your personhood. Is it more like selling your labor? Or maybe it's more like um, something kind of controversially in between, right? You know, uh, let's not, I mean, I don't want to get too far into the ethics of prostitution, but, um, you know, folks get way more nervous about the idea of selling your, sort of the use of your body where it's somehow different than labor, although lots of feminist concerns arise here. Um, but, you know, you want to just try to see what the right analogy might be, okay? That's really what I'm looking for. I'm looking for you to um, elaborate why the fact that a person is their data um, should matter. And the reason why um, I'm raising that in this context is that, you know, it's one thing if we know, you know, a lot of the stuff we want to talk about uh, as problems comes from the ways that the data could be used that comes... Sorry, let's try that again. A lot of the problems, you know, that we've talked about come from the way that the data can be used uh, to come back and bite you, right? So you give some information to one app and then somehow you're getting denied a job because of some stupid algorithm down the line. But here, we're, we're stripping all that away and we're just saying, okay, if it was completely anonymous, you know, there was no way this is going to be connected back to you, um, why is it a problem that you're being used in this way, right? Um, so you probably want to try to think of an analogy that's going to help you here and then just try to explain, you know, whether or not Sachs's objection works, okay? So this is a little bit broader of a question than question one, but it's going to involve a lot of the same fundamentals. So just to summarize, um, let's see, let's grab another color. I don't know what that one is. Um, but you want to just, you know, again, say a little bit, about, oh, that's kind of interesting. Oh, it changes colors. Wow. All right. Sorry, distracted. Um, so you want to say a little bit about this, uh, what this question is, but not as much as you would in, if you were doing question one. Um, you want to focus on the objection, you know, about uh, you being your personal data, right? And you want to elaborate that out as best you can. And then you want to say, you know, you want to see if you can come up with some reasons why, um, so I guess this is, if this is number one in the cool sparkly thing, this is number two in the cool sparkly thing. And then number three is all this, you know, just trying to explain why the fact that you are your data should be so, um, important because the way, when you read Sachs and you definitely should look at the part of Sachs's paper, it's pretty short, uh, in answering this, when you read it, you know, he treats it as almost kind of like a mic drop moment. It's like, yeah, but if you are your data, we can't use you. So, uh, we're done. But that's 
probably not enough. And that's what I want you to spend most of the paper trying to work out. A lot of different ways you can go. Totally up to you. Uh, what I'm looking for is that you just make the best argument you can. Uh, you don't have to be right, but you know, the more solid your argument, the more helpful it is.